Hello and welcome to the 16th session of our discussion on machining science. In our uh, previous discussion, we uh, talked about the grinding process, particularly the mechanics of uh, grinding. And uh, we have seen that how we can estimate analytically the total grinding force and from the total grinding force that is the tangential force on the grinding wheel, how we can find out the average force per grit. Now, we said that average force per grit is more important because we want the worn out grains to be dislodged from the surface of the grinding wheel because when glazing occurs, I will remind you that glazing occurs when you have a hard wheel used on the hard workpiece material. Then the sharp grains on the grinding wheel will be worn out very quickly. And if the wheel is hard, that means if the bonding is strong, then the worn out grains will not be coming out from the surface of the grinding wheel. In that case, the worn out grains will cover the entire surface of the grinding wheel and the wheel will not cut efficiently, not remove material efficiently, it will rub more and it will consume more power. Surface finish will be bad in that case and this case we said that the wheel has glazed, that phenomena is called the glazing of the wheel. Now, so that the glazing does not happen we want the average force per grit to be increased in case we have a hard wheel used on the hard workpiece material. And to remove that uh, worn out grains, we need to have the Fc prime increased. So, we know we have to know analytically how to estimate that so that the parameters that we can regulate or manipulate so that the Fc prime can be increased. So, this we have seen. And while looking at the F c prime estimation of the F c prime, you must have noticed that it has been found out through the power consumption in, uh, in grinding. And to estimate the power consumption, we need to know the volume of a chip, then how many chips are removed per second and the material removal rate. So, while making that, while estimating the volume of the chip, the number of chips and the and the MRR, we found out what is the maximum uncut thickness. Maximum uncut thickness is used to find out the specific energy and from the specific energy you can find out the power consumption. Now, while estimating the volume of uh, a chip, in that case we have used, you must have noticed the length of a chip. Now, you understand that the length of a chip cannot be measured experimentally because chips are very small and chips fly away. So, therefore, there is an uh, analytical estimation of the chip length which is important because we have to find out very accurately the length of a chip. In that case, we can find out and very accurately the volume of a chip and therefore, accurately we can find out the T1 maximum the power consumption and finally, the average force per grit. So, today we will discuss how to estimate analytically the chip length in the grinding process. Now, you understand that this chip length in the grinding process will be different in case of for example, surface grinding or external cylindrical grinding or internal cylindrical grinding. So, let us discuss how they differ from each other chip length. So, if you see this slide, let us say first we will discuss the uh, horizontal surface grinding. This is the grinding wheel rotating at a grinding speed, grinding wheel speed of V, let us say. This is the workpiece which is given the feed velocity of V f. This distance from the grinding wheel center up to the point where it is in touch with the workpiece, this is the d by 2. And this much material has been removed, that means from here to this point and this distance as you know that this is the depth of cut. 
So, this distance therefore, will be d by 2 minus d which is the depth of cut. Now, uh, this a and o from o and b this is the chip length and this is what we have to determine analytically. Okay. Now, let us take an example of this grinding process and say that in one rotation during the feed. So, as a result of the grinding wheel velocity v and the v f the point has moved from a to b. So, this is the preview this is the uh, current position and next position will be here because of the v f given and the v existing this you understand. So, therefore, in this if we consider this chord O A, if we can uh, approximate the arc by a caudal distance of O A, then from this triangle we can find out the geometrical relationship. Now, let us say we say that the tau is the time taken for the wheel to travel the distance O A. All right. This is the distance that has been travelled by the grinding wheel by tau minute or second or tau time. Therefore, O A is can be written as tau and since it this travel is because of the v velocity of the grinding wheel. So, this will be O A is equal to tau and the v c. So, this has been taken as v c anyway. So, this v c and v is the same. Now, this distance a b this is the distance on the uh, workpiece and this distance has been moved because of the feed velocity given to the workpiece. So, therefore, time taken for the wheel to go from o to a will be the same as when it is going from a to b, but a to b distance is travelled because of the v f. So, therefore, a b we will be writing as the same time tau into v f. So, O A once again is the tau into V C. Now, this tau can be replaced by uh, from here we can find out that this is the O A divided by V C that is what we have done here. Therefore, the chip length which can be said to be as O B and this O B is equal to O A plus A B okay. and uh, O A plus A B we will write as O A into V f divided by V c. So, therefore, the length of the chip will be O a into V f by V c plus 1. Now, that O a has to be found out. Now, we take this triangle O a n by approximating the um, arc O a by a caudal distance O a. All right. Now, we say here from here that O a square is equal to a n square plus O n square that is what it is written here. So, therefore, O a square will be a n square we can write also as O prime a square minus O prime n square. So, this is what we are writing here O prime a is d by 2 and O prime n is d by 2 minus d this is what it is given here. Okay. So, plus d square that is O n, O n is the uh, equivalent to the depth of cut. So, we are getting this equation and if we solve this equation we will find out that O a is equal to root over diameter of the grinding wheel into the depth of cut root over capital D and the small d. So, therefore, if we put this value O a here or here we will find out the chip length is equal to this root over d d here into v f upon v c plus 1 this is what it is shown here. So, this way analytically we can find out the chip length in case of the surface grinding process. And as I said earlier that uh, the chip length in the surface grinding will differ from the chip length in the uh, external cylindrical grinding or internal cylindrical grinding. So, let us see in case of external cylindrical grinding what happens? Let us take an example of the grinding wheel in this way. This is the grinding wheel rotating again at a speed of v or v c all right. 
and this is the work piece and this is the external surface which is being ground. Now, here it is in contact grinding wheel is in contact with the work piece and because of the V f given that is the feed velocity given to the work piece as we have seen earlier in case of the horizontal grinding process surface grinding process. Because of the V result of the V and the V f this point will go from here to here. So, O a plus a b we have to determine like in earlier case and the chip length will be O b. So, which is equal to O a plus a b which remains the same as in case of the surface grinding process. Now, O prime a this is the uh, d by 2 capital D is the wheel diameter and O 2 prime a this will be d w upon 2 d w is the diameter of the um, work piece external diameter of the work piece because we are considering now the external grinding process. So, therefore, from O a and a prime this triangle O a square is equal to a a prime square plus O a prime square and a a prime square we can find out as O prime a square minus O prime n square like we have done earlier plus O a prime square this remaining. Now, O a prime O prime a this is equal to O prime a this is equal to d by 2 d by 2 square minus O prime a prime is equal to O prime O minus O a prime. Okay. So, this is what we are writing and uh, O prime a O is equal to d by 2. So, this will be d by 2 minus O a prime square plus O a prime square remaining here. So, ultimately what we are finding out is that O a square is equal to this. So, here we are uh, this are getting cancelled d square by 4 d square by minus d square by 4 and uh, O a prime square O a prime square getting cancelled. So, what we are getting is that O a square is equal to diameter of the grinding wheel into O a prime. So, we will keep it this way for uh, time being. Again we will come back to the same triangle O a a prime. We will write that O a square is equal to A a prime square plus O a prime square as we have written earlier. Now, this uh, this a a prime a a prime is common for this triangle as well as for this triangle. So, therefore, a a prime square also we can write as O 2 prime a square minus a a prime square. So, that is what we are writing here that this is a a, a, a prime square we are replacing by O 2 prime a square minus O 2 prime a prime square and this is remaining. Okay. So, next we are manipulating this <coughs> that O a square is equal to O 2 prime a square minus O 2 prime a prime square from the diagram you can see this all right. and O 2 prime a is the d w by 2 that is what we said is the diameter of the work piece and uh, O 2 prime A prime can be O 2 prime A prime can be said as O 2 prime N minus N A prime, okay, N A prime here. Now, here you understand in this figure like if we extend the curve of this curve here. So, between the machined surface and the unmachined surface this distance will be the depth of cut like we have seen earlier in case of the surface grinding process. So, in case of external cylindrical grinding this is the uh, depth of cut. Now, uh, therefore, the O n O n this is the depth of cut we are putting this value here and O a prime is remaining. So, finally, what we are getting is that O a square is equal to d d w minus 2 into d w by 2 minus d into O a prime. Earlier we have proved if you remember that O a square is equal to d into O a prime. So, from here we can find out that O a prime okay, O a prime value we can find out as O a square divided by d and this value O a prime we are putting it here and we are getting 
the this equation. So, if you solve this equation, you will find out finally that O A square is equal to this value that is D small d into capital D divided by 1 plus capital D upon D w which is the diameter of the workpiece. So, therefore, O A we are getting as root over this value. Okay. So, if you can see if you notice that this value is actually different from the one that we have earlier found out for the surface grinding process. Now, the chip length therefore, for external grinding external cylindrical grinding will be 1 plus V f by V c that we found out earlier into O a and O a is this value. So, this is the total uh, length of the uh, chip in the case of the external cylindrical grind. Now, let us see uh, what happens in the case of the uh, internal cylindrical grinding and again I am telling you that uh, in case of internal cylindrical grinding because of the configuration of the grinding process because of the very properties of the grinding process the uh, chip length will be different than in case of the surface grinding process or the external cylindrical grinding process. Let us see the um, uh, what happens in case of the internal cylindrical grinding. Look at the diagram here. So, this is the grinding wheel and here is the work piece. So, you understand that this is the we are talking about the internal cylindrical grinding. So, in case of internal cylindrical grinding it is the internal surface which will be ground and this is the work piece. So, let us uh, say that this is in the section, okay. this is the metallic part of it you understand that and uh, the outer diameter is here okay. and internal diameter is here. So, from this, this, this if this is considered to be the center of the uh, work piece that is the cylindrical work piece. So, this distance from here to here is the d w by 2 here it is shown actually d w by 2 and uh, from here to here this is the d by 2. Okay. This is the diameter of the uh, grinding wheel and this divided by 2 this is the radius of the grinding wheel. Now, uh, like in the previous uh, diagrams this is the point where the grinding wheel is has started grinding process and it is in touch with the work piece. And then if we extend this curve which is not machined, so if this extension will go on this and this will be the B. So, this is equivalent to the B point in the case of surface grinding as well as in case of external cylindrical grinding. So, in case of external cylindrical, cylindrical grinding I will show that diagram once again to you. So, here we had the O this is in contact with the work piece. All right. And uh, this O point is moving from here to O A, okay, from O to A and then by extending this curve, extending this curve we are actually finding out that this is on the work piece which is the point B. So, if you actually see the surface grinding process for example, here it is easier to uh, understand because it is on the uh, it, it is visible that it is on the surface of the work piece. So, uh, once again that O, A and B this we are considering equivalent to the surface grinding as well as the external cylindrical grinding. So, now let us look at this diagram come back to this diagram. This is the point where the grinding wheel is in touch with the work piece. Now, if we if we extend this on the wheel O, A a point will be on the wheel and through the A point if we extend this. So, this will go to the uh, this will be the A point and this extension of the curve of the machine surface here this one okay, this will be touching the point B which will be equivalent to B in the case of external cylindrical grinding and the surface grinding. So, we have that O A B here the chip length is O B which is O A plus A B okay, which is O A into 1 plus V F divided by V C or V F divided by V. V or V C is the grinding wheel speed that is found by the pi into grinding wheel diameter D into 
n. So, what I mean is that v or v c is the same here. So, this is pi and the d and the n. So, n is the revolution per minute of the grinding wheel, d is capital D is the diameter of the grinding wheel and pi constant. So, pi into d into n will give you the v c and v f will be given into meter per minute as well or millimeter per second. Now, this will be if we see the diagram and if we see the configuration, then when the work speed v f is much smaller than the wheel speed v, which is usually the case, the pre peripheral grinding operation equations will be written as this. So, before that I should tell you that if we look at the configuration of the internal cylindrical grinding, we can actually say that it will be similar to the external cylindrical grinding except that here it will be capital D small d divided by 1 minus. So, this sign is different in case of external cylindrical grinding it was 1 plus d upon dw and in case of internal cylindrical grinding it will be 1 minus capital D upon dw. This is the only difference between the external cylindrical grinding and the internal cylindrical grinding. However, you should appreciate that this value that we are getting for the chip length in case of external cylindrical grinding is different from the value that we are getting for the internal cylindrical grinding. So, you can judge which one is less, which one is more okay? and uh, this is the value that we got from the surface grinding process. Now, what we are saying is that the V f can be considered to be very small, much smaller than the V c that is the uh, feed velocity given to the work piece is much smaller than the cutting velocity given to the grinding wheel. In that case, we can ignore this factor that is 1 plus V f by V can be considered to be is equal to 1 because V f and V we are not considering, okay, this is same and therefore, the chip length in the surface grinding can be considered as the root over d into small d and uh, in case of external grinding process it will be root over capital D small d upon 1 plus d by dw, capital D by capital dw and in case of internal cylindrical grinding this sign will be changed. Now, if you remember when we were discussing the mechanics of grinding process, initially we said that we have to take the volume of a chip. In case of volume of a chip, we have taken that half of B max into T 1 max into L and that L we have taken as root over D D. Okay? You remember that and there because we have considered that V f that is the feed velocity given to the workpiece is much less than the, the cutting velocity given to the, uh, to the grinding wheel. By the way, if, I, if you remember also I said that V c uh, ranges between 10 to about 80 meter per second, okay? whereas the V f ranges from 0.2 to 0.6 meter per second. So, if you consider, if you compare you will find that really this happens that V f is much smaller than the V c. In that case we can actually approximate these values, but uh, when it is not the case, when this is not the case in that case we have to very accurately find out the chip length in case of surface grinding, external grinding and internal grinding. So, that we could find out the power consumption very accurately and the total tangential force on the wheel accurately and finally, the, uh, the, the force per grid that is important and that is why you are studying this chip length here. Well, after that we will see the specific energy in grinding. So, the specific energy can be calculated through the total tangential force on the wheel and I said to you earlier the total tangential force which we have considered to be F c which is working as the if the grinding wheel is in this way all right, and this is the total tangential force. All right. Let us say this is the work piece grinding wheel is rotating in this way and the V f is given that is the feed velocity is given to the work piece. This is the work piece. 
this is the wheel. All right. In this case, the U C, this is the specific energy, this is equal to F C into V C. Now, or it can be considered to be the uh, through the MRR. All right. So, F C V C is the power, okay. this is the power that we said earlier and uh, power is also given as the U C and the material removal rate if you remember. So, therefore, from these two we can find out that F C is equal to sorry U C is equal to F C V C divided by material removal rate. Okay. So, this is what we are writing here that U C is equal to F C into V C. So, let us consider this as V C. So, we said that V and V C is the same. Now, uh, divided by the material removal rate and the material removal rate is equal to speed into area. So, this is the area, okay, area of cut and this is the feed velocity. So, feed into area is equal to material removal rate that we have seen earlier. So, this is what we are doing here. So, we are finding out that the U C is this. Now, it is coming from here, whatever I have written actually it was written here. Now, this specific energy in grinding has been found to be an order of magnitude higher than for the single point cutting such as turning. It has been shown experimentally that this increases that is U C specific energy increases as the uncut thickness T 1 or the T 1 average as we are saying this is decreasing. From the curve you can see that as the T average is decreasing the U C is becoming very high and when it is increasing the U C value of the U C is low. So, this reason is that at very small chip thickness involved in grinding the plastic deformation occurs over an area having very few or almost no imperfection and the material tends to behave like an ideal material with no inhomogeneities. I will remind you coming back to the defects <coughs> dislocation which we have studied in the very beginning. There we said that the um, actual shear stress or the theoretical shear stress which is required is g by 2 pi to create the, the slip. Okay. And that value of g by 2 pi is very high and it is uh, almost impossible to provide. But in practice what we have seen that the stress required to make a slip or the plastic deformation is much less than that. And this is because of the defects or the dislocations which happen in the in the lattice structure of the metal. Same thing happens here that at a very small T 1 the imperfections do not lie there. Okay. The defects or imperfection lie little below that and that layer in case of grinding it is very small T 1 which is uncut thickness. Within that layer since there is no imperfection so that layer can be considered as an ideal material. And the for an ideal material you know that the shear stress required is very high. So, therefore, the power consumption is very high and the specific energy will be very high. That is the reason why this uh, happens that in grinding the very high specific energy is required for removing the small uh, T 1 which is the uncut thickness. Now, this is the effect that when the T 1 decreases the U C increases or the specific energy increases. This effect is called the size effect. Okay. The increase in U C with decreasing chip thickness is called the size effect. However, size effect is one of the reasons why the specific energy in grinding becomes very high. The other reasons, there are other two reasons that we will be discussing in our next session. Thank you for your attention.